Hey guys, welcome back. Long time no see. In today's video, and I'm actually gonna make a series of videos where I'm gonna be going over some more like training stuff for uh, my staff here at the store. But I'm also gonna be posting these for your uh, individuals who maybe wanna learn a little bit more about shoes and kind of learn a little more about the fitting process with the shoes as well. So today I'm gonna be going over the lasts of the shoe, which is actually more of like a, like it's more like the shape of the shoe. Um, last is actually the mold they use to form the shoe. So typically if you think of those like wooden foot shaped things that you maybe see on movies or TV or something like that, where they kind of like have that inside the shoe, that's actually what they use. They use something similar to that. They have a, I think they have a couple different methods of doing it and it's more modernized now. It's probably more of a plastic mold instead of wood, obviously. But they use that and they kind of shape the shoe around that. Like if you ever look, watch like an older uh, movie where there may be like, there's a shoe cobbler or whatever you call them. <laughs> But he's like basically shaping that shoe around that wooden piece. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about last. But when we're talking about last with running shoes, we're typically looking at the bottom of the shoe more than the top. What I mean by the bottom of the shoe, we actually call this the outsole of the shoe. So this rubber portion or the midsole of the shoe too. And that kind of carries the shape of the running shoe for the most part. The upper plays a small role in it as well, but we're mainly looking at this for running shoes. This is the part that really matters with running shoes. The, the foam offers all the structure in the shoe and also gives you all the support in the different support categories that you can go into with the shoe. So um, starting off, I guess we're gonna start with the semi-curved last right here, like the Saucony. Saucony is almost what we call a linear or straight last, even with their semi-curved shoes. But I would still call this a semi-curved last if you kind of draw a line through the heel here, kind of come up in through the midsection of the foot and then off through the toes. That's gonna be more of a semi-curved last. And the types of shoes that kind of fall into the semi-curved last is gonna be a lot of our general running shoes actually. So. There are stability shoes. So stability shoes offering that extra support to help with overpronation um, that have a semi-curved last. Typically, I feel like for the most part, you're gonna see uh, more of a linear last with those types of shoes, but a lot of them, like Saucony, for example, makes the guide and the ride um, with the same exact last, but the only difference being the posting piece right there. Sometimes the brands will do that as well, but sometimes they'll widen up this section. Like I know the New Balance, New Balance, like higher Christian shoes, would typically widen that section up as well through the arch just a little bit and maybe make it a little more of a linear uh, last shoe. So typically, the linear last shoe, you're going to have a little bit wider arch. I'll go over that again when I, when I get into the linear lasted uh, section of this video. So on the semi-curved section right now, so looking at this shoe, you kind of see as drawn the line, it kind of curves in just a tiny bit, not a whole lot. You almost have to debate if it's uh, linear lasted or not or straight lasted um, for the shoe. Sometimes it can be deceiving though, if you just look at the tread patterns, it can make it seem more curved than it is, and then we'll kind of look at that with more shoes when I uh, pull them up as well. So let me grab a shoe that's a little bit more curved, um, but still what I would maybe consider a semi-curved last in my opinion, this is the Brooks Ghost. So the Brooks Ghost has got a pretty um, semi-curved last if you ask me, um, for the most part. Again, it can kind of be deceiving if you look at all the tread patterns and stuff. Pretty narrow through the suction right here. So that maybe offers a little bit less stability. This is actually a neutral shoe. Same with the Ride, which I just showed you guys. They're kind of diving into maybe some shoes that are gonna give you a little bit of stability, but they're maybe not classified as a stability shoe. This is a neutral linear lasted shoe or neutral straight lasted shoe. Um, as you can kind of see, comparing it to the Ride, we're having, we have quite a bit of difference here in the arch sections of the shoe. So we have the echelon right here with a really wide piece right here. This works really well for orthotics, people with like a flatter arch with more of their arch touching the ground. Um, what I always tell customers is that if you step in a puddle and then you step out of that on the dry land, you're gonna see with a flatter arch, you're gonna see more of that um, footprint. There's gonna be more of a footprint through the arch there or a wider piece through the arch. So that's what this shoe works really well for. Um, it does help with the more surface area if you think about like physics um, with surface area, the more surface area the shoe has, the less overpronation we'll typically see, and also the less underpronation or supination that we'll see with the shoe sometimes as well. So really good for people who um, maybe are more on the outside of their feet or underpronating as I like to call it, or if they supination is motion outwards, underpronation is not enough motion inwards. So if we see that, maybe stick them into like a linear lasted shoe, or if you know that you kind of supinate more, uh, maybe go into more linear lasted with a little bit wider arch through there. It can be deceiving though, our, foot, our first, the first piece of our foot to come down on the uh, ground is actually the outside of our foot. So don't judge how you wear on the outside. If you're on, on the outside heel wearing out, that's actually pretty common. If we see a lot, 
up in the forefoot right here when you're on the outside, then we maybe have uh, to be concerned about that. But again, that's why you come to a run specialty store to get fitted. Sometimes you can even see a wear on the outside if they overpronate, because you overpronate in, and you have an opposite reaction out. There's a lot that goes into it. Wear is not going to tell you everything on the bottom of a shoe um, of what category, at least of what category they need to go into. And with insoles, this just has a really nice base for insoles to sit down nice and flat onto. So that's why it works well for insoles. And it's also not going to, like, if you're in too corrective of an insole, it's less likely you're going to um, supinate or underpronate with that insole. So a couple things to kind of keep in mind with the last of the echelon there. Now diving in to another linear lasted shoe, but a slightly different, um, or straight lasted shoe, but a slightly different design. So this is actually more of like a stability version of what we just talked about with the echelon. So there's stability, neutral, as we know, but there's also a category we call motion control shoes. So they're more like stability shoes, but they're actually even more corrective. The reason why is because they have that, that more linear lasted shape to them. So if we draw a line through, again, ignore the tread pattern through the center of the arch and then through the center of the toes there, that's going to be a pretty straight line right there. So what that does gives you that more surface area through this arch right here. If you compare to the Ghost, for example, as you can see, the Ghost has a pretty narrow arch through there. But then this um, aerial right here, I didn't even mention it. The aerial and the beast, so the men's version is called the beast. Um, but this is the aerial, so this is the women's version. We have that section right through there um, being a little bit wider, so it gives you a little more stability, prevents some overpronation and also some underpronation. But the piece that gets you right here is this, they have a denser foam in this inside portion of the shoe here. So what that will do, it will overcorrect if you don't need that correction or if you have an insole in here. And also we have these guide rails here. So they're giving you tons of different methods for their stability. You can use guide rails, denser foam, wider base. That's pretty much Brooks just combined most of the most, the most common stability methods all into one shoe here with the Brooks Aerial. So this is somebody for somebody who really over or over pronates with a flatter arch, stuff like that, because that, that wider base through there. Uh, typically when you have a flatter arch, I see most people will over pronate. Doesn't mean you're gonna over pronate if you have a flat arch, but a lot of people who have a very flat arch are gonna over, over pronate as well. So this will help reduce that over pronation, but it'll also give you a nice base. I would not recommend this with insoles because it has those corrective pieces, it can overcorrect you. And with the guide rails, sometimes the insoles don't sit all the way down in there, so they can get caught on those guide rails. I don't have a Brooks Dyad here, but that's a good one for insoles from Brooks. So if you wanted to check out a Brooks shoe that has that, the Brooks Dyad. Also, the Saucony Echelon is actually my, one of my favorites for insoles because it's just so wide and through that arch section right there. And it gives such, gives such a good base for those orthotics and insoles. They actually, on the, on the box, they say orthotic friendly. So um, again, that was just kind of back in my point with the, the orthotics and the insoles. All right, kind of diving into our last, last, our last, last, <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> um, the last, last is <laughs> the curved last. So basically you're gonna see this more in, you don't actually see it as commonly in training shoes, but more minimal shoes, uh, more racing flat. This is a racing flat by Saucony. So we've had a lot of Saucony shoes, so I figured I'd grab their flat as well. So we have a racing flat, um, and typically, because you're more on like the balls of your feet, you're trying to be a little bit snappier, a little bit quicker, quick, quicker, uh, quicker. <laughs> you're trying to be a little bit quicker. Um, you want to have a little bit less weight to the shoe and a little bit less surface area sometimes as well, especially this arch section right here. That's gonna, the more surface area, the slower typically the shoe is because you have more contact with the ground, more friction. Um, also, it adds weight when you have a more linear lasted shoe because it's just more material through this arch. So we want to reduce that amount of material as much as possible on a racing shoe. So that's why it's got that more curved last. You can, you can kind of see it, and it's a very narrow arch, and it kind of curves more in through here. This is, I don't even know, I, I, I almost consider curved last and semi-curved last to be hardly distinguishable, but yeah, this is probably more of a curved last right here just because of the narrowness of the arch. Um, the only really real reason um, I really consider last is more of this arch section right here. Sometimes I'll consider it for other reasons when I'm fitting people for shoes, um, but typically people who are coming in to get this shoe you're going to be, normally, even if they have a flatter arch, typically you're going to go into something like this anyways, or any, anyways. <laughs> well, I'm really <laughs> a little bit rusty. <laughs> um, but yeah, if we're looking at this, you want to, uh, want to fit somebody just kind of generally, like comfort is what I really look for in fitting for racing shoes. You're not really going to get any good structure out of racing shoes. You're not going to be like, oh, this is for stability. This is for neutral. No, they're all pretty much neutral. Um, actually, it can really cause even more of a pronation, but you're not going to be in them very long. So. They're more about performance than uh, a good um, structure to the shoe. So that's kind of the, the gist of last. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be the first episode in my series. I felt like this is the thing I needed to address first. It's the most confusing thing. I feel like most people don't know what lasts are and like 
how they interact or how they affect different people and uh, with insoles and whatnot. So uh, typically, yeah, higher arch, a little bit higher last, typically a little more comfortable with most people because they can kind of feel it snug to the arch and then lower last, a little more linear last. Um, that's all I've got for you guys today. If you like the video, just hit the thumbs up and subscribe below.